Hello everyone, this is me Adnan Gauri, the founder and director of iWork Station. I welcome you all for the season 2 of BIM series. So this session is by Victor Kuzer. Victor is a BIM and parametric design expert from UK London. So I welcome you Victor. We can go ahead with the questions and you can also explain them about the three agendas that was defined in the poster as well. Yes Victor. Sure. Hello everybody. My name is Victor and as Adnan announced me, I'm a BIM and computational design expert. And today I'm here to talk about uh, computational design as a tool in BIM and for the AEC sector. So what is uh, computational design? Uh, the broad term of course, we can slice the words, it comes from computation and design. So it means applying computational logic in the design process. And traditionally, we connect uh, that uh, notion with uh, uh, complicated, uh, complex geometry shapes uh, that are rarely used in architecture. They are used in uh, only a few very high-end projects. So, to my experience, actually, some people think that computational design is only that. But uh, the sweet point where BIM and computational design meet is actually tools like Revit, like Dynamo, because Revit is, in essence, a database. And computers work very well with databases. They can process lots of data uh, quickly and we can apply logic to a uh, vast amount of data. So what's the application of computational design in BIM? We can still achieve those uh, complex geometries like uh, um, Zaha Hadid style uh, geometries in architecture, but we can also make our lives as architects uh, easier and we can achieve better design overall. Um, how to do that? Like using Dynamo and Python for Revit, uh, I've, I've done many scripts that um, automate mundane tasks for the BIM coordinators, the BIM managers, and for the architects, like automatically loading uh, files, uh, component files, family files, into Revit projects, linking, uh, uh, creating different sections and plans in the project automatically based on a certain logic. Like, for example, if you want to dimension to a curtain wall, to a facade, you can just select the facade and then get the panels dimensioned them separately, get sections where you need them, things like this. Uh, we can create sign parameters, populate data. Actually, we can, um, this is what I've recently done since I'm working on uh, the master plan for Heathrow Airport in London. And we, we use a lot of GIS data. And out of the box, there is no good way to import GIS data into Revit. You have to go through that. You have to export a DWG file from GIS and then put it in uh, Revit. That's the out of the box way. But through computational design, through Dynamo, uh, we were able to streamline uh, data between GIS software and Revit because they're pretty similar. We have geometry and we have attributes of data. So the attributes in GIS just become uh, uh, shared parameters in Revit and that data was pushed uh, in and out successfully. So uh, there is, I can't really, like if, if I only talk about the application of computational design, I'm going to run out of time. Um, there are countless possibilities. Uh, you can do it. I can actually send some links uh, if uh, someone's interested in seeing more examples about that. Or 
um, you can just uh, look it up. It's uh, it's a very good time uh, to do this. And Dynamo actually pushed that through because computational design existed before Dynamo. We had Grasshopper. We had some developers doing code on top of Revit with the Revit API. But what Dynamo is doing is it's allowing people with little knowledge about coding to just apply the logic they want to in the project because it's visual programming. It is uh, something that is a lot easier to learn compared to traditional coding, writing code. So why learn Dynamo? Dynamo runs on top of Revit and Revit, last time I checked, Revit, uh, of the market. Uh, what's what was that? Yeah, there was some background noise. I have just muted. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Hope everyone can see can uh, hear me clearly. So last time I checked, Revit uh, had seventy percent of the global market share of BIM software. So why learn Dynamo? Well, if you want to position yourself in that marketplace as a professional as an expert dynamo is a good choice because it's uh, it's just operating on top of uh, the most popular software in the world that deals with beam and it is actually getting more and more popular autodesk are doing great uh, with marketing with lobbying and they develop new tools, Dynamo is updated uh, pretty often. Now with Revit 2020, we have a new version of Dynamo, yeah. which is really powerful. And how to learn Dynamo? Yeah, that's a very basic question like most of the people are asking, like how they should start learning the Dynamo, right? Well, how to learn Dynamo, it's a lot easier now. Uh, I started learning Dynamo in 2013 and there were no sources. There were literally no sources. The only thing that existed back then was the forum of Dynamo Beam. Actually, it wasn't even called Dynamo Beam yet. It was just Dynamo. And when you look up Dynamo on Google, there were some... Uh, you know, like uh, these physical dynamos popping out and uh, dynamo, some American magician or something. Yeah, exactly. There was nothing about the software actually. Mm. And the only place on the internet that we could, we could find some information was the dynamo forum. And then you had to ask questions to the guys who actually did that. What fun fact is that there are eight guys in the team that is developing Dynamo. Eight guys. On my team now, we are, I have 20, 21 people working in a small part of the project that I'm working on. And there are only eight guys developing Dynamo. And to me, that's astonishing. Like uh, so many companies and people around the world depend on software developed by only eight guys. So, yeah, how to learn it? Yeah, Victor, there, there's also one common question from a lot many people is like uh, they, many of them used to do modeling. So, is it uh, uh, as we heard from other people, like it will get automated with the help of Dynamo? Yes, if they're modeling in Revit or Formit. And recently we got a release of Dynamo for Civil 3D. Uh, but this is more, uh, I don't know if some someone here is working in Civil 3D, I'm making bridges, roads. Uh, the cool thing is that with the help of Dynamo for Civil 3D, we can actually get these roads inside of Revit because I've had to do that many times uh, before, and I wish there was Dynamo for Civil 3D, but we had to just export CSV data from Civil 3D to get it into Revit. 
so how to learn it? A uh, good start point is uh, the Dynamo Primer. Mm. It is uh, it's a website set up by, by the authors of Dynamo, which uh, covers the basics. It's really well structured, which is a good thing. Mm. And it goes step by step. Yeah. Although, if you've never done uh, something like computational design before, it could be a learn. Uh, it could be a steep learning curve. Uh, only reading through that because it's also kind of brief. It's very good structured information, but it's short and brief. So um, might be a little bit um, hard in the beginning. And then you can try something and go to the Dynamo forum and ask people how to do it. But uh, it's really important that you've tried it first. Uh, these are the rules we have developed during the years in the Dynamo forum. If someone is just asking, hey, can someone uh, show me how to do this? No one would do that. That, uh, that person is usually not gonna get an answer because it needs so much investment from uh, someone to actually go and find a solution then give him a ready solution for free nobody is doing that but if you show uh, some work that you've put inside even even if it's not the best even if you just started but you show that you put some work you might get help you, you definitely get far better chances of getting help like this uh, also uh, this is actually something that because many of my friends, my personal friends in the architecture and BIM world, they started using Dynamo and they know that I've been using it for years and I know how to do it very well. And they ask me questions, how to do this, how to do that. And even though they're my friends, I'm telling them, okay, I might answer you for free, no worries, but put it on the Dynamo forum so it's helpful for other people as well. Yeah, I'm asking like, can you also show the Dynamo Premier site like from where the, the all the participants can go? Can you share the screen? Sure. Just a second. You can see my screen now. Yeah, we can see your screen as well. Okay, so Dynamo Beam uh, dot org is uh, the, the website where you can uh, download Dynamo from. Uh, this page is uh, new. It looked uh, differently before. It is divided now by different Dynamo versions. Format, Sandbox, Dynamo for Revit for cv 3 d And here's the form. And I have a yeah, someone liked something I shared there. Uh, so here people just ask questions, they get answers from others. Uh, what I sadly noticed on a couple of occasions recently is that because so many more people are using Dynamo now compared to before, mm -hmm. sometimes some questions are answered but by people who are not that qualified to answer these questions and people are getting bad advice. Not always, but I've noticed this on a couple of occasions. Uh, then on the other website is uh, the Dynamo Primer. This. What? Okay, my network. My internet provider doesn't like that. <laughs> Okay. Let me Google it. Okay. So it's uh, primer.dynamobeam.org. Yeah. And here you can see it's very well structured. It's introduction. What's visual programming? So we start from what's visual programming and we go to all the way down to best practices, scripting, geometry, but this is all the information you got. This is like one paragraph. And then some additional, here some coding. Of course, this is towards the end of uh, the thing, but 
Yeah, this is pretty much one one page. So it's not that detailed, but it is uh, a very essential information. Right. And you get more resources, mm -hmm. have the Dynamo Wiki. Uh, we also have something called Dynamo Dictionary, which explains, because in Dynamo we work with different packages and different nodes, and the Dynamo Dictionary has all the nodes and uh, a very brief explanation of what every node is doing. Although, if we go to Dynamo, of course, and uh, we kind of get the same information from the node, like when we hover on top of it. Now, now it's showing the error, but uh, let's see here. We put our mouse on top of it, and we get that uh, brief explanation for what that node is doing. Yeah, I actually have Dynamo and Revit open right now. We've been doing some randomization hmm. so yeah and why learn dynamo actually I, I wanted to show you this uh, if I go to LinkedIn and I look for a job like say automation specialist uh, Automation specialist or Dynamo expert? No, yeah, even if uh, if we don't look for something for Dynamo, if, if, if we look for a beam coordinator, which is more of a standard uh, uh, job. Okay. And yeah, this is the first thing that pops up for me here. Beam coordinator, job description, key responsibilities, skills. Dynamo experience would be beneficial. Right. Let's go to another one. Dynamo experience. Yeah. It's it's a beam coordinator role. It's, it's all about beam. Your profile. Mm. Revit, Navisworks, two models. Hands-on experience delivering a beam project. Let's see. How you match skills? Dynamo is still one, one of the skills that they put for that description. Let's right. see the, the third one. This is more like a brief description. Beam level three. Cut Revit. Okay, these guys they they don't want uh, Dynamo, but also the salary they offer is uh, lower than uh, the others. Uh, Map coordinator. Now it's first cut Revit, of course, mode game. Like if we if we go through these, many of those will if not require dynamo, then at least dynamo will be beneficial. Even if you go for like a beam technician or architect, uh, yeah, like even if we ask the question why learn beam, um, it is pretty much everywhere. Nowadays. If I just type in architect and see what's what's popping up. Oh, this is for, yeah, uh, I had that. Uh, when, when you type in architect nowadays, there are all these software architects that also appear, and I don't like that they use, they're using the same term. So this is Foster and Partners, looking for an architect. Communication, English. Okay, but do, do that research yourself and see how many of uh, the companies are actually looking for that. And if I type in Dynamo, let's see how how many offers are there. Eleven pages. So let's see which companies. Of course, I'm in London right now, so I get uh, offers for London Beam Coordinator, Beam Manager with Dynamo. Foster and Partners are looking for Beam Technician. Uh, this, these are the results that uh, 
that pop up when I type in Dynamo. Project BIM leader, BIM coordinator, BIM coordinator, experienced BIM coordinator, BIM technician, senior architect, BIM coordinator, BIM coordinator. Yeah. I'm actually leaving the company now, so they, they need to find a replacement. Okay. Uh, facade engineer or architect with facade specialization. Actually, for curtain walls for facade, that was really helpful. Being coordinator. Pretty much all the practices uh, now looking for someone who at least has uh, some knowledge about Dynamo. It, if that person is not creating the Dynamo scripts, they have to at least be able to use the Dynamo scripts the company has developed. That's uh, what I have observed. So it is a good skill to have in your skill set. So now let's see the questions. Yeah. There's one question. Well, should should we should we do the break now? Uh, we can uh, we can take a break, but before that, uh, can you also showcase like uh, you also have a channel, right? Sorry. You also have your channel. That that, that is. Yeah. Can you, can you show your channel as well? Absolutely. Yeah, I have I have a website and channel. Website is called RevitExperiments.com. Mm. It is meant to be mainly a blog. I have that Revit Tips and Tricks ebook, which is free. And uh, if I just Google Revit Experiments, my YouTube channel is also going to show up. And it is, it is a Revit and Dynamo YouTube channel. It's not so professional, unfortunately. Most of the things are just screencast with little to no editing. Uh, but it is focused on uh, out of the box things, like how to make things that haven't been done before that. Of course, some of the videos are now four years old, so they have been replicated a lot. Uh, but let's say things like automatic dimensions, like this is really big in computational design now. Mm. This is one of the last videos I've done. Just a demonstration of how to make automatic dimensions for multiple walls in a certain way, certain logic. Mm. Uh, Can we also do this uh, automatic dimensioning in, in AutoCAD as well? Sorry? Can we do this automatic dimensioning in AutoCAD as well? Uh, no, I haven't. Okay. Like I use I use AutoCAD, but not as my main tool. I use AutoCAD to just um, uh, look at some drawings that I'm exporting or importing in and from Revit. My main tool for nine years now has been Revit. So I don't really consider myself uh, the greatest in AutoCAD. Yeah. Uh, there are some, I, I'm familiar with some automation tools um, for AutoCAD, but uh, I can't really, I don't know how they work exactly. Uh, and this is a tool that is done with Dynamo uh, that links multiple CAD files into the same project. And it is exactly the same thing as um, the usual way of linking these cats to Revit. We have the same options, colors. I didn't use the layers one, but uh, it could be added. Positioning, import yeah. units, correct lines. It is that window. So it will import all the drawings in all the levels. All directory, it. and it gets all the files from that directory. It puts them inside right. our project. Uh, automatically and I, I just I had to do this uh, some time ago I had to link 104 cat files to the same Revit project I linked four and then I was like oh no I, I can't really do this manually I have to come up with something so yeah that is my channel I hope and there are also some, uh, I think people really like the video where I'm showing how to map an image 
on a curtain wall in Revit. Uh, which is something that we can do with computational design. It's more like on the GMB, uh, ske uh scheduled. We can we can make a specification for these uh, panels. So it is Revit, um, which is the tool for which is a very good tool for documentation and specifications compared to other uh, computational design tools like Grasshopper that run on top of Rhino, which is great for complex uh, jewelry geometry, but yeah. then we can't really do documentation and views and stuff. Okay, uh, so I suggest we make that five minute break now and then yeah. I answer questions. Sure. Okay. So we'll take a five minute of break and we connect back again. Okay. Cool. You all can connect back again with the same link. Thank you. So let's go to the questions. Okay, okay. Yeah, so he, was, he is from the MEP background basically. From his question, I can understand this. His question is, what is the difference between Dynamo and Python? The difference between Dynamo and Python? Yeah. Well, uh, I, I'm gonna share my screen. to show the difference visually. This is Dynamo. It is a plugin that runs on top of Revit. And with the newer versions of Revit, it is uh, directly shipped and installed. You don't have to install it additionally. You can install new versions, but uh, so you get it. This is its interface. We are working with nodes that we connect to create the logic. So it's all visual. You don't write any kind of code. That said, Python is a coding language and we can use Python inside Dynamo or separately. Like if I type in here Python script, we can go and use that as a node and we can just start writing our Python code here. We can also use uh, Python uh, out of Dynamo, running on top of Revit with the Python shell, or with PyRevit, which is another plugin for Revit. So that is, uh, in essence, the difference. Uh, in Dynamo, you just work with these boxes most of the time, and you connect the logic. In Python, you write it as code. Does that answer your question? Okay. Uh, there's one more question from Brahman itself. So, yes. I was asking, can we create crowd for walls using Dynamo? Uh, so, can you repeat that for me, Adam? Yeah. Uh, can we create cutout for walls, floors using Dynamo around MEP geometrical surfaces? Yes. Uh, we can we can place walls, we can place floors, uh, and that's uh, actually a very maybe something that I've done the most. Uh, different ways of placing walls uh, to achieve different things, uh, and we can uh, we can also place walls with edited profiles. So that means uh, they don't necessarily have to be. A rectangular, we can place walls by face, we can create the levels in Revit and on those levels we can create uh, slabs, so Revit floors. We can, we can place uh, uh, families like uh, components in Revit, uh, we can do many things with Revit elements, with Dynamo for Revit and we can also import 
we can create geometry natively in Dynamo and then put it in Revit as a Revit component, as Revit family. We can work with topography from Dynamo, although uh, topography in Revit is a bit limited and that way with Dynamo it's also a bit limited. That's something I have to mention is that uh, Dynamo is a good tool for automating the things that we can do in Revit but we're still in Revit. It is, um, uh, how to frame that? Uh, since some people that I know want to learn Dynamo and they're not really familiar with Revit and BIM software, all of a sudden they hear Dynamo is so popular now and it's that magic tool that can uh, do everything. It's not really like this. But if you know Revit, if you know Revit well, then you can really appreciate what it's doing. Uh, because you know the native way Revit is dealing with the problem and then you know how much faster and better that becomes when you automate it. Do we, do we have, um, does that answer your question first? Right. So is, is there any other questions from the participants? You can raise your hand or you can even uh, switch on your video. Ashwarya, or uh, from Anula Jain, yeah, from Brahman. Yes, can Brahman. we use uh, Can we use Dynamo for AutoCAD automation? For Autodesk. AutoCAD. Can we use for Dynamo for AutoCAD? Uh, actually, for AutoCAD, we have auto uh, that we can do automation. So, in the same way, can we use Dynamo for AutoCAD? Yes. Uh, so, you are asking if we can use Dynamo for AutoCAD. Huh. And it is uh, like Dynamo is open source. So, it's can be adjusted to work with different uh, different pieces of software and it is uh, since recently it works with uh, AutoCAD Civio 3D and this is a version of AutoCAD uh, as I think you might know which specializes in uh, Civio projects so bridges mostly and roads uh, I share my screen. Can you see my screen? Yeah, we can see your screen. Here, like when we go to the Dynamo website, dynamobeam.org, uh, we can see that there is a version of Dynamo for Civil 3D, uh, which is pretty much AutoCAD with some additional tools. Uh, we can, with with the help of coding, we can make Dynamo work for a variety of software, a uh, variety of pieces of software. And I've seen one of my friends, and uh, he's a brilliant guy. He's very bright, he's very smart. So he actually made a tool in Dynamo that links, uh, creates a life link between AutoCAD and Revit. But that tool, had to be coded, so some code was necessary to make it work. But then there was a life link between AutoCAD and Revit, which was really cool. You draw some uh, rectangle in AutoCAD, and that immediately makes a floor in Revit. But it was, it looked really cool. But when you think about it, it doesn't really help so much to have that life link. I mean, we can still get drawings from AutoCAD and put them in Revit. And in terms of if you want to use Dynamo for automation in AutoCAD and continue working in AutoCAD, uh, I don't think that will be a good solution since AutoCAD is just lines and shapes mostly 2D. I mean, I know we can do pretty complex 3D uh, projects in AutoCAD, I've seen this, but it's just geometry on layers. It's not smart. Whereas in uh, BIM, a door 
has all the properties of a door. It has uh, material, it has physical properties. It knows that it is a door, so it knows that uh, if you want to exit the room, you go through that door. So in the recent in uh, Revit 2020, you can automatically, with the press of a button, uh, just uh, draw like an exit line, shortest path lines. Uh, so working in AutoCAD is kind of backwards. It's not. Uh, it's not really what we aim to achieve with. BIM. Uh, but if we really want to make Dynamo run, run on top of AutoCAD, we can use some things and the best bet would be using Civil 3D because it has uh, already Dynamo. It's still somewhat uh, limited from what I've seen, but it works with the tools for Civil 3D like bridges points from these bridges and roads alignments. So yeah, that's it for Dynamo and AutoCAD. Uh, can we use Dynamo for uh, Navi's work uh, flash detection? Like uh, if you do an, uh, some flash detection in Navi's work, so uh, can we use Dynamo for uh, Navi's work background? Because Dynamo supports, well, uh, you said Dynamo supports Revit, Dynamo supports mm -hmm. AutoCAD, Civil 3D, and some other software. So is there any difficulty, like, uh, uh, can it work behind Navi's work? Uh, no, not, not to my knowledge, please. And I doubt that that's going to be a thing since the way Navis work is uh, processing the data. Uh, I don't think that we're going to see Dynamo for Navis work, for Navis works. Uh, I have been using Navis works quite a lot actually and um, I don't really see too much of application of a computational tool on top of Navis works since Navis works already has these tools. The other thing that uh, exists with Dynamo is actually doing the clash detection in Revit. Uh, it's a different thing. We have, we have these smart tools from a package called uh, Bimorph, which uh, is dealing with these intersections directly in Revit. It's really optimized. So if we want to, we can actually do that kind of class detection in Revit. But also for class detection, what I've been interested uh, recently was uh, BIM 360. So BIM 360 is uh, another, it's a cloud-based cloud uh, Autodesk product. And you can check it up. I, I think it's this is going to be the future of working with different models and uh, clash detection. Navisworks is still good, but uh, you can you can take a look at that. Unfortunately, uh, uh, like Dynamo and Navisworks is I don't see it as a thing. They they can't work together now, and I don't think they will in the future. Okay. So, uh, Victor, can you, you you are also teaching one course, right? You are launching from 1st of August. Can you show, uh, show us like what exactly the course is about and how it will be beneficial, uh, beneficial for the people to learn in India or from other cities as well? Uh, yeah, so we have the Dynamo course and it is a course that gets you from the start, from a position where you haven't really opened Dynamo yet, so it familiarizes you with all the tools that you can use in Dynamo, like uh, we start with the interface, how to install it, and then we start dealing with geometry, dealing with families in Revit, um, go all the way through to give, to give you an overview of all the things that you can do with uh, Dynamo. Uh, so I've been teaching that uh, course for almost a year now, 
to different audiences and I, I, I think the results are really good. Uh, it's not really giving complex uh, detailed solutions for a niche problem, but it's giving you that uh, whole picture, it's giving you a tool set that okay. you can later develop with or without the help of another mentor and develop your own complex solutions. It's just giving you the tools, pretty much, teaching you the tools. And can you showcase also the like one, one, once you've got so yeah. can you can you showcase us the content of the curriculum? Yeah. Just let me <coughs> am I sharing the screen now? No? No, you haven't shared your screen. Just a second. So uh, yeah, uh, that course is also going to be very beneficial for people who want to get a job in a company that is using these scripts because it gives you all the foundation. Then when you are given a Dynamo script, you will know, okay, that's doing this, that's doing that. I, I can use that script in, uh, in my work. Um, Me. Still no screen? No, it's not yet. Yeah, now we can see the screen. Uh, so this is uh, the plan I've been using. This is a uh, working pro project uh, in uh, file. Well, which some notes I've, I've done. It's pretty much starts with an introduction that shows uh, Dynamo uh, as it was used in actual real projects. And I generally uh, divide the, the application of Dynamo in three categories, geometry samples, Revit family samples, and project documentation samples. It's though, it's kind of arbitrary though, because uh, we can have two of those in the same application or all three of those. So it's more like only going to create geometry now. Or oh we are only going to work with families and parameters now. Uh, so it is more fluid but still I I have divided the samples in these three categories. Then uh, I'm explaining what's an algorithm and how to use algorithms. An algorithm is pretty much uh, giving instruction to the computer what we want it to do for you automatically. It's uh, like, uh, yeah, you just tell him, do this for me, do this for me, do this for me. Like, uh, it's like a recipe for preparing food. And then the computer processes all that it it uh, it follows your instruction on a large set of data. Uh, visual programming, how to create logic, and then introduction to Dynamo. What does the interface look like? Uh, how to install it? Dynamo for Revit standalone versions, interfaces, packages. The course is focused on Dynamo for Revit, though. We have a standalone version of Dynamo which is paid version. The Dynamo for Revit is uh, for free. If you have Revit, you can install it for free. And the standalone version of Dynamo cannot really work with Revit directly. It can work with uh, software like Formit or you can just uh, do logic uh, and geometries, but it can't work with Revit. You need Dynamo for Revit to actually achieve. Uh, to actually work with Revit projects. Then I'm talking about lists and functions. And usually this is the most boring part if I talk about it computationally, but I've come up with uh, really good uh, examples and metaphors that explain visually how these lists and 
functions work. And this is probably, if I, if I get only one thing that is valuable from this course, it's going to be the listeners functions. Because we, most of us, come from an architectural or structural background, we come from the modeling too, and then we are put in a world of computation and code. So this is the most difficult thing to understand for a designer. But once you understand that, then it's all so much easier all of a sudden. And then working with geometry in Dynamo, where we actually enforce what we have learned with the lists and functions. In all the rest, we are enforcing what we've learned here with different examples. Uh, so yeah, the course is very much example based. Uh, so we have uh, vectors, points, lines, curves, surfaces, how to do them in Dynamo, how to export them, how to import them from Revit or from other files, uh, how to chamfer, fill it, how to make booleans, like something that I didn't like when I started using Revit many years ago is that we don't have that boolean geometry in Revit. You can say, okay, difference O or solid union, we can actually do this in Dynamo. So importing from Revit, from external file. This, this whole part is uh, dealing with geometry. Then the next part of the course is working with the Revit elements. So placing walls, placing families by points, uh, placing families by face, uh, adaptive components, working with views and sheets, extracting information from the families, location, direction, parameters, and controlling the families' parameters from within the animal, which is one of the biggest advantages of using Dynamo. If you have like uh, 200 uh, curtain wall panels and you want to uh, change a parameter inside these panels with uh, some logic you have to go and do it manually, but with Dynamo you can just apply the logic and does it for all these panels. And then at the end of the course, and this is uh, like, um, since I've, I've been working with different groups and different groups uh, go on a different pace. So I, I've designed the course in such way that it gives you uh, that foundation with uh, amount of buffer time at the end of the course. So depending on how much buffer time we are left at the end of the course, we can just uh, go through uh, a different number of examples. And I usually show more complex solutions with Dynamo to show that actually in complex solutions, they are pretty much a set of simple solutions. It's not so complex. It's something that you can actually learn. It, you don't, it's not rocket science. So that's it uh, about the course. And it changes, you know, uh, it's not a static course. I mean, I'm also learning all of the time new things, so I, I'm trying to apply these things to the course. So that's it. And also you can go to my website and get that book for free. Uh, it's called 27 Tips and Tricks for Revit. It's done some time ago before the release of uh, Revit 2019. Uh, but the tips and tricks are still valid. Uh, so you can get that, it's free. And yeah, let's go to the questions then. And then uh, I think that's the plan to go through those questions that were sent. Yeah, there's one question from Anuna. Yes, Anuna. Hello, Victor. Hello. Uh, this is Anuna. Uh, I wish to ask, like, uh, is structural optimization uh, possible as of now in Dynamo? It is. 
Uh, and um, you've probably done structure optimization with uh, a grasshopper, have you? Oh uh, no, I haven't tried uh, that to call grasshopper, but like there are some automatic optimization uh, tools and uh, some structural uh, uh, analysis software. So I've done that uh, using those only. Mm -hmm. I've been actually really interested in optimization recently. And that's another thing I can show you. It's called Project Refinery. It's, it's a new project by Autodesk that uh, works together with Dynamo. I'm just sharing my screen to show you that. So Project Refinery is a tool for optimization. It uses genetic algorithms to optimize whatever we tell it to. So it can optimize, uh, in these examples here, floor area ratio, it can optimize panelization, and I don't see a reason why it can't optimize uh, uh, structures. So if I just play one of the videos, or at least I can try. Maybe that won't work now, but uh, Google Project Refinery, look at these examples. Yeah, They're really cool. And uh, this is what I've been doing uh, mostly recently. I've been playing with that. It's really cool. You just, if you just make your script in such a way that you have numeric parameters, inputs that go uh, that are in a certain range, and then you get outputs of the script. Uh, these genetic algorithms make different variations of the inputs. They measure the outputs, they compare them to a certain... We have one best solution, we have a set of best solutions. Each is of a compromise for the different uh, requirements that we have. And the cool thing is we start with a randomized set of solutions. We compare which ones are the best. Then we get only the best. We add a little bit of randomization. This is how the genetic algorithms work. It's really cool. I, I don't really have uh, the time to explain all of this now, but it's yeah. uh, really cool. Not a problem. Not a problem. Thank you, Victor, for the answer. Thank you. So there's one question, one more question from Rajesh. He wants to ask, yes. like, what is the workflow for Tecla to Dynamo? Is there any workflow for it? From Tecla to Dynamo. Uh, yes, I've seen, I've seen people using Dynamo in Tecla. I haven't done this because I come from an architectural background and. I'm not a structural engineer. I haven't really worked with Tecla. Uh, but I've seen people using Dynamo uh, with Tecla. I don't know if it was a custom solution because as I said, Dynamo is open source. You can adjust it to your needs a lot. Uh, what is more popular is using Dynamo with both Revit and Robot. Autodesk robot, which is the Autodesk's version of Tecla. But again, I'm not I'm not an engineer. I can't really I don't have any experience in both robot and Tecla, so I can't really talk about that. I can see there are actually a couple of questions in the chat. Uh, so the first one is not a question. Is structure optimization, yeah, yeah, so we already answered that. And we have some more questions uh, from the uh, list. Why we need to learn Dynamo, I think I already talked about that. Yeah. Any more questions uh, from anyone?
So I think uh, it's, and there's no question from other people as of now. So can you like uh, can you share the book as well for the 27 tips and tricks for Animo and Revit? Uh, how how do people can access the book? Uh yeah sure uh it's easy. Share screen. Yeah. Well, well, my my website is annoying enough, so it's gonna ask you if you want to download that book when you go to the website. Mm. If you just hang around here, I've done a really annoying website, so it will just pop up here if you want to get that book. If you spend some time on the website, you get this window here. So. You put your name, your email address, and I send you the book on your email address. And I actually sent some Dynamo scripts uh, as well uh, with that email address. It's like a gratitude for subscribing to my website. Right. So I'm sending the book and some free scripts. You can also do it from here. Uh, you can go to that article, you can read more about what's in that book and uh, how it was created. It was pretty much, uh, I've been working a lot supporting architects uh, that work in Revit and there are some questions that I was getting all the time. That's how I compiled that book. Which looks like this. And yeah. So let me let me check some of those questions uh, that we have here. Dynamo usefulness, we answered that as well. It's pretty much how 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 to learn Dynamo. Dynamo or Grasshopper, that's a question by Rajesh. Shinde, if I pronounce that correctly. If I don't, I apologize. Uh, so Dynamo or Grasshopper, what's the need of the hour? Very, very good question. And I'm really glad that someone uh, raised that question. So the answer is both. Depends on uh, what are you working for. I would say that actually right now Dynamo has uh, more application than Grasshopper uh, worldwide because Dynamo works for, for Revit and Revit is used a lot more than Rhino. Uh, in my company and the companies I worked for, we have been using Rhino a lot, but we are dealing with complex geometries like really weird shapes of roofs and that's where people traditionally use Rhino and since they traditionally use Rhino uh, they just do these geometries with the help of Grasshopper because Grasshopper was on top of Rhino but then we still do the documentation in Revit we still make BIM projects in Revit so we actually get that uh, geometry and that uh, paneling information from Rhino and Grasshopper and with Dynamo, we shove it back into Revit right. as a proper component. So that's uh, that's a workflow for complex uh, landmark buildings. Uh, some of the things are done in Rhino, but then they are still pushed into Revit and documented in Revit. Thank you for joining again, and we can conclude the session, Victor. I'm saying like we can conclude this session as of now, and tomorrow we join back again. Okay. Same time, okay. 30 p.m. So if any one of you have more questions with the Dynamo, you can ask there. And you can also get the book from revitexperiments.com. So thank you all of you. We'll connect back again tomorrow.